Macaralgi Nano Tanks. Everybody seems to be doing them right now. They are incredibly popular, which I'm really pleased about because I love Macaralgi and any tank of Macaralgi is a winner to me. But are they difficult? Is it harder to keep a Macaralgi Nano Tank than a Coral Nano Tank? Well, actually, I think they're about just as hard as each other because Macaralgi is not an easy thing to keep. Despite what you've been told, despite what many people think about it, it's very challenging. Of course, there are some easier species to keep than others, but when you start moving into a mixed macaralgi tank, it does become quite challenging to keep everything happy. I set this tank up around a month ago, and I cheated a little bit because I used completely mature rock. Rock that I got from my main system. If you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that I have a big macroalgae system with a large sump. So I essentially took rock from here, which had been maturing for a good six months, and I stuck it in here. And that really is the key to the success of this macroalgae tank. Now, macroalgae hates immature systems. If I had done this nano tank with basically dry rock or freshly cured rock, then this tank would be looking completely different right now. You can see that we have a little bit of um, diatoms or dinoflagellates, I mean, on this bit of algae, but that is the extent of the cycling that's happened in this tank. Macroalgae is very sensitive to that. They can see actually a little bit of dustiness on this macroalgae, and this is what you would tend to expect in an immature, uncycled aquarium, but it would be over everything. And that is basically the death knoll to a lot of macroalgae because it stops it from photosynthesizing. And you might be wondering why I'm talking about that when I'm actually discussing nanotanks. So the thing about nanotanks is they are more susceptible to fast, sudden changes. In a large tank, as we all know, there's more water, there's more filtration, so on and so forth. So it has a larger ability to absorb change, if that makes sense. In a little tank like this, 30 litres, things can go wrong really quickly. And that is something which macroalgae does not like. Especially when it comes to nutrients. Um, this tank in particular, I'm having to do really large water changes. So I'm actually doing it um, every two weeks. I'm draining it down to about here. Now in a coral tank, although we do have some polyps in here, they're getting on really well with that water change um, amount, they don't care, they're out, out and about happy as Larry. So I would say if you have sensitive um, corals, you probably wouldn't want to do that, but with the soft corals, they tend to be more hardy and, and tolerant to that. But I'm having to do that because the macroalgae runs out of nutrients in a small system like this. And especially when they start to grow, which they are growing, you can see here, my codium is all fluffy and furry and the tips are quite bright green compared to the center, which is darker. And that means it's growing. The Colerpa taxifolia is sending out new shoots. So we've got growth all over the place, but that removes nutrients. And again, in a larger system, there's more tolerance to the nutrients being removed. In a smaller system, a little nano tank like this, the nutrients are gonna be removed really quickly. And a lot of the nutrients that we think of, nitrates and phosphates, iron, they're just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many elements and things in salt water that we don't test for, that we don't replenish with supplements. And that's the sort of stuff that this macroalgae dies if it runs out, essentially. And that's where a lot of people go wrong, is they're dosing things like Cheeto Grow, or they're putting nitrates and phosphates in in certain amounts but their algae is still not growing, still dying. And that a lot of the time is due to not doing large enough water changes to replenish these little nutrients that we don't even think about. So that really is one of the main issues is nutrient availability. In a nano tank, they run out faster essentially. So you have to do more regular and larger water changes of course, that brings its own problems because you have large fluctuations. When something runs out, maybe the alkalinity's gone down, and then you add new water, you can get a big swing. But I found that macroalgae is actually quite tolerant to large swings in water quality. One thing they're not tolerant to is running out of stuff. So basically, it's quite all right 
to do large water changes in a nano tank. Another thing you might notice is this is non-standard gravel. This is actually freshwater Manado gravel by JBL. And I've found this is working really well. I was quite skeptical. This was a complete experiment to see what would happen. Manado, this stuff, is designed to use as a freshwater plant substrate. Um, it has a lot of iron in it. And you can see here, it's kind of rusty. And that's basically the iron coming out of the Manado. But what this does mean is it's ideal for macroalgae tanks. This is the first, and I'm assuming only, macroalgae nano tank in the world, perhaps, that has Manado in it. I don't think anyone else would do this for, for obvious reasons. It's a saltwater tank. You'd go with your standard Coraline, wouldn't you? You go with this gravel that everyone else in the world uses. But this Manado gravel is doing so well in this tank. Obviously, you don't get the buffering effect, but you still have a highly porous substrate, which is great for acting as a filtration. So this is where a lot of bacteria is going to live, giving us great filtration in this tank. And also, it's releasing iron into the water, which is really good for macroalgae. Now, you might wonder why this macroalgae here, which is blue octodes, the same as what is at the back there. That is a, that is a horrific zoom. Let's zoom back out. That's blue octodes there. And why is that one blue and this one is white? And you can see a little bit of the dinos that I was telling you about. This will eventually go away once the tank's fully matured. But why is it white? And it's essentially too much light. When I set this tank up, I used this spotlight here, which I had kicking around. I haven't really used it. It's clearly brilliant at the reef spectrum because these corals I've never actually seen them as happy as when they're directly under this light so spectrum wise absolutely perfect for reef environment but anything that's underneath it directly macroalgae is too strong for it that's why these have gone white you might see this happening in your own reef tank or nano macroalgae tank and if you do then just put your macroalgae around the edge which is what I've done there's plenty of light getting to these algae but not directly underneath. It's too bright for them. Some of them are doing okay. This Cladophora pro prolifera, which is at the back here, is doing quite nicely under the light. And this other Gracilaria here, the branched one that was growing out of the rocks, is doing quite nicely as well. But certain species don't like it. Gracilaria mammillaris, if you watched my setup video, you'll notice that there was only a couple of little leaves on here. It has grown under it, but it's this bleached out colour. So what I've had to do is just rotate the, the rock around slightly to make it less direct underneath the, uh, the light. And it seems to be working. But that's something you might want to consider as well when you're setting up your macroalgae nano tank is just to maybe buy a less bright light than you normally would. Because not all macroalgae like being completely blown away by reef spectrum lights. And this is a good example of, um, of what happens. You essentially get bleaching in your macroalgae. One thing that is challenging with nano tanks is actually the livestock. You've already seen him, but I've got a little yellow Okinawa goby in here. He's doing really well. And the only other things I've got in here really is cleanup crew. We've got some dove snails in here. You can see one there. And they've actually bred. Dove snail eggs look like those little white specks at the back. You can see the dove snail eggs at the back there. There was only two dove snails in here when I set the tank up, but they have bred. There are now babies. So dove snails are a great choice. The other thing we have in here is mini brittle stars. These are great detritivore. You can see they just stick their little legs out and try and capture stuff from the water. But I feel like they also come out during the night time and uh, feed amongst the stuff that's left over. I don't actually feed this tank very much at all. Obviously we've got a little goby in here, but he gets like one flake a day. And that's the extent of the food that's going in here, which I think is another reason why it's staying so stable. Um, in my other tanks I feed quite heavily and we're getting a little bit of hair algae and I think it's due to that. There's some more things sticking out of rocks doing stuff. I don't know what they're called, but that's part of the ecosystem that you want to build up in any reef tank. The rise of macroalgae nanotanks is a pleasure to see, 
but I'm also seeing a people falling down at the first hurdle. So hopefully this video will give you a few tips. I'd say the biggest one really is try and get as much mature rock as you possibly can. That's difficult these days because especially in the UK, the import of live rock is absolutely finished. Uh, I don't think you can even buy live rock anymore. So all you can get is dry rock. But if you have a mature system, then the best thing you can do is set it up with your dry rock inside of it, get it matured in your main system if you have one, and then move over to your nano tank because that's going to save you months and months of maturation. Literally, it was just three bits of live rock, mature live rock, and nothing's really happened in terms of cycling in this tank. It's really nice, really easy progression into sort of growing macroalgae rather than having to fight hair algae or fight diatoms and things like that. So we'll continue to follow this tank in the coming months. Hopefully it's gonna fill out quite nicely. I'm definitely learning a lot myself from keeping a nano tank. The reason I keep bigger systems like this is basically because I can be a bit lazy. You don't have to spend as much time on a large system as you do on a nano system, which is kind of odd to think about it, but it's just the way little tanks are. They need a lot more love and attention. As you might have noticed, if you watched my previous setup of this video i have added and changed a few things the clerpa prolifera which was here um, which looks like this as well that's clerpa prolifera that all melted immediately when i set this tank up so i've changed it to clerpa taxifolia which i personally think looks a bit nicer anyway i also added some codium and cladophora prolifera to see how it would do also this little red hair algae here but overall i think the effect's quite nice obviously the lighting is the issue here because it's going to impact growth in the middle but I think that's okay because we'll just put corals in the center of this tank rather than um, fill it with macro in the middle. So that look nice, corals in the middle with algae around the edge. I might get some more fish, I'm thinking a pair of blue pipe fish would be nice in here as well, keeping it nano and keeping it simple. But there's plenty of creepy crawlies in here, I think you might be able to see some on the glass, copepods and things for them to eat, so they should do quite well. But I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's been helpful if you're thinking about setting up a nano macroalgae tank. I certainly recommend one because they are brilliant. If you're looking for macroalgae in the UK, then visit my website, which is www.plantedreef.co.uk. I'll add it to the description. Availability does vary because obviously I have to grow it. But at the moment, most things are available. So knock yourself out. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you have done, you are the MVP of my channel. Once again, thanks for watching and happy fish keeping.